Hi everybody, it's Carol. I am going to try a screencast this time. We'll see if I can do it. It will uh, not put Dr. Langhorst out of a job, but I'm going to just give it a shot. So let's see. This is the final video for OTL 5500, and I'm going to talk about uh, Web 2.0 tools. And this week we're supposed to talk about our favorite Web 2.0 tools. And so the first one I want to talk about is Screencast-O-Matic, which I am trying to use. Now I will, um, in full disclosure, I will let you know that this is probably my fifth take. In fact, I even uploaded one that showed me on the screen. And when I had it all the way uploaded to YouTube, I was not on the screen, so I was quite disgusted because it took me a long time to upload it. So I hope that doesn't happen again. Um, and if it does, I may bag this whole idea and go back to our regular videos. But I like Screencast-O-Matic because I've seen Dr. Langhorst use it, and it actually provides that um, presence in the classroom that is so missing in online education. And I think that he has certainly modeled um, the importance of that um, for all of us, that it gives that personal touch and that feeling that we're actually in a classroom with someone, that we have a teacher, that we have someone who cares about how we do. And as he uh, uses his cursor to point at the different things that he wants us to do, then we know that he's showing us um, the things that he thinks are important. So I think as a teacher that that's something that we should all strive for, and so that's what I would like to do. So I think that uh, Screencast-O-Matic is great. Uh, the second tool that I'll show you is Padlet, and I'm gonna try and be quicker on this one than I was the last several times. And then Google, I don't know that I'll demonstrate, I'll just click over to it um, in the interest of showing you that I know how to do that. Uh, my crazy computer does this all the time, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, and um, anyway, I think that uh, we've all done a lot with Google, so I'm not going to mess with that too much. But um, let's go on and go to Padlet. That was one of the tools that I used. Um, and I do want you to know that one of the reasons that I chose my tools is because they're all free. And I think that's important to college students. They're paying for college, um, and they are paying for books, and so I think to have a free tool is, a, is an important thing. So this is the Padlet website, and as you can see, um, a Padlet is this right here, this whole area, and what it is, they say, is like putting a sticky note on a bulletin board, and it's a virtual bulletin board. So each of these things has been added to the Padlet, and you can see it's a variety of things that can go. It can be an image, it can be a video, and um, I'm going to try and create a Padlet. That was a little cumbersome before, but I'm going to see if I can get it done. So let's see if I can get that to happen uh, quickly. Um, I should have some uh, tools. There's one of the backgrounds. Of course, I think that's beautiful. I didn't uh, plan that, but that's what popped up. Let me go over to this background. Let me go back here. And let's go to school. And I'm going to go to that. And I'm going to go to just new Padlet here. And it's going to give us some designing tools, and it'll show you how to make a Padlet. All right, so this is the design um, area right here, and this is the Padlet itself. And you can see that the backgrounds can be different. Uh, the Padlet that popped up or the background that popped up at the beach was beautiful, but that wouldn't apply to everybody. And so you can choose a variety of things. So you would title your Padlet over here. Uh, you might make a description if you want. You can choose a layout, and so there's a grid here that you can use, or you can choo um, choose any sort of thing, free form or stream. You can just do it however you want. And then there are different wallpapers, and so they've shown you this plain one, but you can also do ones that are very um, elaborate, too. Um, there is one. This one is quite unusual if you see that that's very unusual so when I did my uh, my lesson plan I did it on uh, the novel Beloved by Toni Morrison that um, I read in another class in fact Kathy and Cameron also read it and what I did was I decided that I wanted to use that so that I could have the students create a plot line for that particular novel uh, there's a lot of flashback in that novel, and I felt like that would be a good way to order the plot. All right, so I chose a plain background for that, and I'm not going to label it or anything like that. Let me show you once the background's chosen, 
then you're going to have to choose your uh, privacy settings. And as a teacher, you can decide who is going to have access to this. You can decide whether it's going to be private um, or in, in that case, you would give your students a code. You can use password protected. You could make it public if you wanted. Um, in my case, I decided to make it private in that way. You can also decide if they can write on it, if they can edit it or whatever. So anyway, I'm going to go on to the next thing. And um, I believe that it's where you can start posting. And that's right. So here down in the corner, there's just a little button, like a button, and you just press that. And then this first box comes up. And so let's say I'm going to just put in the title and do that. And then my first one might be plot one. All right. Then I can add an audio file, like, or I can just talk and I can add the plot point that way. I could add a video. I can add an attachment. I can add an image or I can add a Word doc if I want to. If I don't like it, I can trash the whole thing and start completely over. And so that's really a great feature, I think, also. Now, as far as sharing goes, you can share it if you want uh, with other people. And of course, I showed you the classroom share, but if you want to share it online, there are ways to do that as well. So you can see those are listed here by embedding or emailing Facebook, Twitter. You can um, also do the, uh, you can print it, save it as a PDF, any of those things. So I think it's a great tool. And uh, if you haven't checked it out, I hope you will at some point. All right, and then as I told you, the last thing, uh, my other tool was the Google Docs. And um, I'll click over to that. But as I said, I had wasted a fair amount of time the last time I felt like going through a product that I think most of us are pretty familiar with. And um, the main reason that I really like Google Docs products um, are that they are free, they're fairly intuitive, um, they save by themselves. And I have actually used PowerPoint and X'd out of it, you know, come over here to this X and closed it and lost slides. And that's really uh, frustrating and disheartening. So I don't like that um, about the PowerPoint product. I will say that slides has gone to uh, a more um, I don't know, simple background um, template, I guess. And Dr. Langhorst told me there are other ways to get prettier back backgrounds, these themes. If you, if you click on that, let me just show you here. I don't know if you've, if you've recognized that or not, but it used to be that for the themes, they had a lot of pretty backgrounds like that, um, like Padlet had. All right, but now they've gone to these more basic color things, and that's all. And I think that's sort of dull. It's unfortunate. But um, as Dr. Langhorst had uh, let me know, you can actually find those in other, in other places. So I don't really see that as a huge drawback. I do appreciate the fact that there's the history. Um, and as a teacher, if you're trying to teach process and a collaboration, you can look to see that students have collaborated and who's collaborated and how much, and you can actually give emphasis on the collaboration part of it in a grade, and I think that that's an important thing. So anyway, those are the things, uh, those are the Web 2.0 tools that I really liked, and I'll be anxious to hear what you chose. Um, but as a final note, I want to wish you all best of luck. Um, it's been just a real prep pleasure getting to know all of you and learning from you. I have learned a lot from each of you and uh, many of you I consider to be friends. Um, several of us have been together since January and uh, that's you know almost eight months and uh, several of us have even gone back farther than that. I know Kathy and I have even had several literature classes together so uh, it seems like the end of a journey and I, I appreciate each and every one of you and what I've learned and uh, I will remember um, these classes a lot and I wish you the best of luck in your future educational endeavors and hope that this degree is something that um, is good for you in the future. And finally to Dr. Langhorst, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you are a fantastic professor. Um, you have given me and I think everybody else more information than I certainly could process and I know I've got to go back and look at a lot of things when it gets down to me actually teaching a class. So um, thank you for that. I feel like I have a solid uh, background and foundation for becoming an online teacher and I owe that to you and I thank you very much and uh, I hope everybody has a good rest of the summer and I will see you in the forum. Let's hope this works.